Section 1 of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission Act 2004 stipulates that a person who willfully provides or collects by any means, directly or indirectly, any money by any other person with the intent that the money shall be used for any act of terrorism commits an offense under this act and is liable on conviction to life imprisonment. Hello Nigeria, thank you for being part of this week's edition of your favorite program, the Eagle. My name is Aisha Gambari. With me on the program is Aisha Mohammed. Hello, darling. Hi, Aisha. How are you doing? I'm good. How was your vacation? It was good. I had fun. Yeah, I know. Relaxing. Yeah, I can see that. <laughs> yeah. Hello, viewers. And it's nice joining you again on the program as we bring you updates on the activities of the Commission. <laughs> FCC will get you anywhere, anytime. Welcome back. On the program today, Chairman of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, Ibrahim Lamarty, says the commission is investigating some cases of politically exposed persons who are alleged to have looted the public treasury with a view to reading the country of corruption. Also today, the commission has been commended for its effort at recovering the sum of over 25,000 U.S. dollars belonging to two American victims of love scam. The Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, says the war against corruption will be fought with relentless vigor with a view to improving Nigeria's image before the international community. This declaration was made by the chairman of the EFCC, Ibrahim Lamardi, while receiving a delegation from the French Embassy in Abuja. And on our special focus segment, we shall be bringing you the Eagles team's interview with Professor Atahiri Jiga, chairman of Independent Electoral Commission, INEC. Please stay tuned. We will be back after the break. Cheers! 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 What is it? Please, keep to yourself. Chivurabo, I got your telephone call. Okay. Anytime I close my eyes, yes. I see dead people chasing me in my sleep. My Jehovah Magadam. Okay. Is it possible for someone to become restless just because of his past? Nevertheless, unless you kill somebody dead, then the spirit will be haunted you. Ha! Was you owe contractors? I embezzled all the money for the roads that are now death traps, killing people every day. I approved the supplies of fake drugs on pipe on water. I embezzled the money. At the fear chief. You are supposed to fear fear for a special man that you don't know of EMCC. I chose to be who are doing with to stop the other people with money. EMCC, as soon as they captured them, threats to prison. Jail. 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 Ah! Are you there? Life is not just about acquire wealth. Making money. When other people are dead, die of hunger and neglect. Be careful. EMCC, I watch. EFCC will get you anywhere, anytime. Our first report today is on the recent visit by investigators from the London Metropolitan Police to the Chairman of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC. The group, led by Jonathan Benton, said they were at the Commission to strengthen the existing relationship between both agencies. Carmen Lugabi is our guide. The Chairman of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, Ibrahim Lamordi, has said that the Commission is investigating some politicians who are alleged to have looted the public treasury with a view to ridding the country of corruption. 
Lamorda made this declaration while receiving a team of investigators from the Metropolitan Police. He said a lot is going on between both agencies, especially in regards to investigation of new cases involving some politically exposed persons in the country, adding that the commission would spare no effort towards bringing looters of public treasury to justice. It is uh, in respect of some of the new cases we have been backed up on, which involve some sitting state governors, some governors that have left office, some ministers that are serving, uh, and also ministers have left office, some former head of service of the, of the Federation, some uh, members of the National Assembly, that uh, we don't, we will never mention names. Lamurde, who also seized the opportunity of the visit to review the activities of his agency, said the UK Anti-Corruption Asset Recovery Task Force Unit had been of tremendous support to the EFCC in fighting economic and financial crimes in Nigeria. We are also very much aware that the Metropolitan Police uh, Proceed of Corruption Unit uh, the, is the unit that assisted us in the case of uh, DSP in the past, Joshua Dari, uh, and of course, the big one that everybody is aware of, uh, Jim Sibori, who is currently uh, serving jail time in the United Kingdom. He disclosed that efforts were ongoing to confiscate the assets of James Ibori in the United Kingdom. He thanked the Metropolitan Police for the great assistance rendered to the EFCC since the inception of the Commission. We believe the work they have done to assist what we are doing has said tremendously in making us achieve a lot of results. It also uh, helped to discourage a lot of people from maybe stealing money from Nigeria and taking it to the UK to either hide or invest, thinking that uh, it will never be detected. Jonathan Benton, head proceeds of International Corruption Unit, who is the leader of the delegation, said the fight against graft could only be won through collaborative efforts of all stakeholders. He promised to further strengthen the existing relationship with the EFCC in the area of investigation. We have had a long-standing relationship and um, I, I, I always look forward to meeting uh, uh, Chairman Lamorde, be it this is my first visit to, um, to Nigeria, but in many of the international forums that we meet at and discuss corruption cases with our counterparts. We, we, um, we must remember that we can only ever do this together. We can't do it in isolation. He commended the agency for the feats so far recorded in the fight against corruption in Nigeria, while charging the commission not to rest on its oars. Still on foreign collaborations, Chairman of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, Ibrahim Lamarde, has said that the war against corruption will be fought with relentless vigor with a view to improving Nigeria's image before the international community. Golden Argo has more. Lamarde made the declaration at the Commission's headquarters in Abuja while receiving a delegation from the French Embassy in Nigeria, led by the police attaché, Mr. Eric Bonichon. Lamorde, who acknowledged the growing relationship between the EFCC and the French police, said that the visit was a proof of the confidence that the French authority have in the commission. To assure Nigerians that the fight against corruption is going on with full vigor, the EFCC boss disclosed that the visit by the French police was the second by international law enforcement officers to the commission within a week. The last one was with the British who came about three or four days ago. And now we are having this with France, and we are expanding, it's multiplying. That underscores the fact that uh, a lot of things have been going on, which maybe uh, the public are not aware of. We, we have intensified our efforts in the fight against economic and financial crime, especially corruption. As part of the visit, the French delegation presented eight laptop computers to the EFCC, saying it was an indication of the improvement in the cooperation between the EFCC and the French government. Leader of the delegation, Eric, said although the laptops were not enough, the gesture demonstrated the implicit confidence and support of the French government to the EFCC in the fight against corruption in Nigeria. 
Eric, who spoke through Balimaroja, Deputy Police Attaché, French Embassy, said anybody who commits any economic crime in France and comes to Nigeria or vice versa will be prosecuted. We have the honor to present uh, eight laptops and eight houses to the EFCC. It is not enough, but it is a sign of the improvement of our operation. Lamoro Day, who received the computers, expressed the Commission's gratitude to the French government. He said the gesture would further boost the efforts of the Commission to stamp out corruption in Nigeria. Golden Ago, reporting for the Eagle. Welcome back and thank you for staying tuned. The EFCC has been commended for its efforts at recovering over 25,000 US dollars for two victims of love scam. One of the victims, Margaret Sanders, says she was delighted by the level of professionalism demonstrated by the commission. Thelma Eke is standing by. The Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, has been commended for helping an American victim of love scam, Margaret Sanders, to recover her 2,000 US dollars from one Benjamin Akube, a suspected Nigerian fraud star. Sanders, who lives in Sherman, Texas, United States, made the commendation after she was presented with a check by agents of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, FBI. The victim, who met the suspected fraud star online and fell in love with him, said the suspected scammer claimed to be Benny Brown from Worry Delta State, who promised her marriage and requested for the said sum to enable him join her in United States of America. The money was wired to him through Western Union into an account with the name Gladys Ipoba, domiciled with a new generation bank. After an endless wait for the supposed fiancé, Sanders came to the sad realization that she had been duped, but her efforts to recover the money were unsuccessful until she petitioned the EFCC. The FBI agent who made the presentation to the victim loaded the cooperation with the EFCC while explaining that the FBI only facilitated the repatriation of the money after it was recovered by the commission. Also recovered in similar circumstances from another suspected Nigerian scammer, Ndeku Jindu, also known as Dr. Daniel Kaufman, is a sum of over $23,000. The latest recovery is for one Jalan Takatsa, also an American who lost $64,000 to the fraudster in a Roman scam. Katza allegedly met Kaufman through an online dating site in June 2012 and the froster introduced himself as a self-employed Caucasian pharmacist. The victim said in the course of the affair, the suspect at different times requested for money under various guises. Before she realized that she was dealing with a con artist, she had lost 64,000 US dollars to the fraud star. She consequently petitioned the EFCC, which through discrete investigation recovered the sum of 23,000 US dollars. The EFCC is in the process of repatriating the fund to the victim. Thelma A.K. reporting for the Eagle. Welcome back. Next is our special focus segment. On the segment, Aisha Gambari had a chat with Professor Atahir Muhammad Jiga, the INEC chairman, who advocates for the strengthening of the anti-graft agencies to effectively fight corruption in Nigeria. The report. 
Professor Atayiru Muhammad Ujiga is a Nigerian academic and a former vice chancellor of the Bayero University Kano. He was nominated by President Goodluck Jonathan on 8 June 2010 as the chairman of the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC. As the 2015 general election draws closer, the nation's attention is on him, with all hoping that he will yet deliver a free and fair election. Not oblivious of the expectation of the people, the professor of political science has his worries. One of them is the influence of money on the electoral process. According to Jega, the use of money in politics can undermine the success of any political process. I find it worrisome that uh, the use of money in politics, uh, particularly in the electioneering process in Nigeria, uh, is capable of undermining the integrity of the process. Um, increasingly, use of money in politics seems to be uh, enticing uh, voters uh, to choose because of what they receive rather than uh, based on uh, choosing those that they believe uh, can deliver. Taking a cue from the 2011 general elections, the Eagle team sought to know from him if INEC checks the source of campaign funds by elective office seekers. You see, we are monitoring. Nigerians are in a hurry. They want us to start dispensing justice now. You know, in my view, the, the rule is about the elections. You know, so we are monitoring, we are gathering information then at the appropriate time we will now come and say okay this is our result he called for a concerted action against corruption in order to fully entrench the culture of transparency in our political system i think what we see is that virtually every political party or every candidate uh, uh, now articulates a program uh, on how to deal with corruption um, but I think we need to move uh, uh, from uh, programs to actual action in terms of uh, dealing with corruption. The electoral umpire also advocated for the strengthening of the anti-corruption agencies to effectively fight corruption in Nigeria. I believe like so many other people that um, uh, a lot of acts of corruption are committed with impunity. And unless and until there are strong sanctions and mechanisms for detecting, apprehending, and penalizing uh, corrupt officials, um, we will continue to uh, uh, have uh, this challenge affecting the political economy of our country. He added that the lack of speedy dispensation of justice is one of the factors impending the fight against corruption. I think there are many areas of improvement. You know, if uh, we can investigate quickly uh, uh, after investigation, then you prosecute speedily. And if the courts can dispense justice speedily, uh, a lot of the challenges will be minimized. Are there punitive measures in the electoral acts against acts of corruption by elective office seekers? There are punitive measures in the uh, Electoral Act. There are offenses that have uh, been defined and uh, for which punish punishment has also been prescribed. Uh, taking bribe, inducing, enticing public officials or election workers or security officials uh, or voters uh, is defined as uh, an offense and uh, there are penalties uh, for that. The former president of the Academic Staff Union of Universities, ASU, called on political office seekers to desist from inducing, enticing, or bribing electoral officials or voters in order to gain undue advantages during electionary process. Does INEC have criteria for checking the background of candidates fielded by political parties? The electoral legal framework at this point in time uh, does not allow INEC to screen candidates. In the past, uh, the Electoral Commission, together with the security agencies, were given the power to screen candidates. Uh, but uh, the 2010 
Electoral Act as amended uh, uh, did not require INEC to screen candidates um, or to use security agencies to vet them. Uh, as a matter of fact, the Electoral Act 2010 as amended uh, literally uh, uh, says that once parties nominate their candidates and submit them to INEC, INEC cannot reject them for any reason whatsoever. There have been accusations that some INEC officials are involved in corruption. How true is this? We have done a lot as a new commission since June 2010. Uh, to make it clear to our staff that they stand the risk of losing their jobs and even being prosecuted uh, if they condone corruption or partake in corrupt uh, practices. And uh, I'm glad to say that we have drastically eliminated the phenomenon of corruption uh, in the electoral process. But uh, some people say there is a 10% rule you know, uh, whatever you do, you know, there will always be those who uh, will do something wrong. Uh, but I, uh, what we have succeeded in doing in INEC is that we have been putting mechanisms in place that will make it difficult for anybody to be involved in corruption without being detected. The professor of political science said in any elections, hundreds of thousands of electoral officials are required. INEC, he said, has a total of 16,000 permanent staff, and so the commission has to rely on the use of ad hoc staff in order to achieve effective coverage during elections. What are the criteria for selecting ad hoc staff? Since 2011, we have been using the National Youth Service Corps members. In any given year, we may get about anywhere between 250 and 350,000 from there, and then we complement them with other students uh, in tertiary institutions. Uh, in particular now, because we, use, we, we require large numbers, uh, we are even using uh, former coppers who have done uh, that work. We require them to register. After they register, we do a thorough clean, uh, screening. We vet, and then on the basis of that, we select those who are to be trained uh, for election duty. Do you also have a mechanism to ensure that these ad hoc staff do not compromise during elections? First of all, we try to minimize it by vetting and screening. And then we also have uh, 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 agencies that stand surety. For example, every na National Youth Service Corps member, as I am sure you know, uh, you know, is doing national service and looks forward to finishing his or her service and getting his or her certificate. You know, so uh, the desire to ensure that you finish your national service with integrity and with uh, uh, your certificate, uh, obviously is sufficient motivation and encouragement for many of them to not do uh, wrong things. Does INEC have mechanisms to check the lifestyle and assets of staff who appear to be living above their means? Of course, uh, 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 if we hear reports of people living above their means, we follow it up and we investigate it. And uh, if and when it becomes necessary, we take action uh, uh, about that. But we always follow due process. We always due process. There are rules and regulations about dealing with people who have committed offenses or who have violated existing rules and regulations. And we make sure that we are fair uh, in dealing with people when they are suspected of doing things. Jega said the anti-graft agencies have done a lot in fighting corruption and calls for the support of all Nigerians in the war against graft in the country. My personal view is that anti-corruption agencies have done a lot, uh, but there is scope for them to do more. And everything that needs to be done to help them do more should be done uh, uh, and as quickly as possible. Sure, Aisha. I actually agreed with what Professor Atahiri Jega said and also what you said. The fight against corruption is for all of us. Definitely. It is a collective effort. Yeah, yeah. It is not a job for EFCC alone yeah. or an individual who almost come from within to say, yeah. yes, 
yeah. we're tired. We want yeah. corruption to be eradicated. Yeah, in exactly. I show you're right. It's it's something that affects all of us. It affects you. It affects me. So let's rise up to the challenge to say no. Enough is enough. With that, we've come to the end of this week's edition of the program. To be part of this program, please send your contributions to info at efccnigeria.org or search for us on Google Plus at official efcc or official efccng at gmail.com. You can also like our Facebook page dot com forward slash official EFCC or follow us on Twitter at official EFCC. And to watch our programs and other activities, please log on to youtube.com forward slash official EFCC. My name is Aisha Mohammed. Remain blessed and thanks for watching. And my name is Aisha Gambari. God bless Nigeria. Bye bye.